It's annoyingly easy to turn a text prompt into an amazing photorealistic image. In this video, I'll be teaching you exactly how Midjourney works and how you can start making stunning AI art with Midjourney. Make sure you stick all the way to the end as every step is important. Otherwise, you'll probably leave this video heavily confused. So when you first join, you'll get a free trial, which gives you access to the Discord server and the website. You can create about 25 images by going to one of the 96 newbie rooms that they have, which are channels on the server. In each of these rooms, there's a mid-journey bot, which listens to specific commands, notably slash imagine. This command uses mid-journey's proprietary model to turn text into beautiful works of art. To use it, go into the newbie channel and type slash imagine. And enter your prompt. Then, it sends a request to a server farm, and then around less than a minute, it spits out a grid of four images based on the prompt you sent. Once it's completely generated, it gets saved to Midjourney's website. And nine buttons appear below the images. Four of them are going to be labeled with a U, and another four are labeled with a V. And the other one has two arrows going in a little loop. The U stands for upscale. It takes the preview of the grid and gets you a bigger image. The V stands for variations. It lets you start from one of those images on the grid and generate a completely new grid of four images based on that image. Those little numbers are how you pick an image to either upscale or make variations on it. It counts up like you read. So starting in the top left, it goes one, two, three, and four. That little undo button lets you retry and generate a completely new grid with four new images and a new seed. For 25 generations, those nine buttons are going to keep you busy. Type in a prompt, generate a grid, and explore upscales of mid-journey's limitless creativity. But eventually, your free generations will run out. If you decide you want to do more, you will either need to create an endless stream of Discord accounts, or more likely pay for a plan. You can type slash subscribe to the Discord bot, or you can directly go to the website and subscribe there. Midjourney, in my opinion, is generous with their plans. No matter which one you get, you'll have access to your generations out of the server and into a direct message with just you and the bot. You'll also get access to the community feed, where you can get rewarded for ranking the generations of other members. The basic membership for $10 a month gets 200 minutes of GPU processing power for generating art. On average, that's about 200 images. Generating the grid the first time takes just about a minute. Upscales take a little more than a minute, and variations take a little less. So, in the end, it averages out. The next level up is their standard membership, which is really an unlimited plan with 15 GPU hours of priority generations, and then as many uh, relaxed generations as you want if you're willing to wait. This is the one that I chose, and if you're interested in really diving into AI art, and want to find your style, having this plan for a month or two is most definitely worth it. I also want to mention the enterprise plan. If you're using Midjourney as part of your job and you work for a big enough company, Midjourney requires you to pay $600 per year for this plan. This also gives you private by default, which is nice if you don't want your generations to go into the public feed. You could also buy private as an add-on for just $20 a month. Once you've purchased one of those plans, you'll have enough chances to generate images that you might want to go for a specific look and feel. Midjourney is super customizable, and that's one of my favorite things. If you've made it this far into the video, please let me know by hitting that like button and letting me know in the comments. Alright, let's get back into the video. There is two main parts of a Midjourney prompt. You have the image or text prompt, and then you have all of the parameters right after the prompt. You can put any number of parameters to, to control the generation and the output. Let me run through each of these really quickly so you can see for yourself what they do. Aspect ratio changes the aspect ratio of a generation. Put in two numbers with a colon between them to control the width and the height at the same time. No, it's exactly what it sounds like. It removes certain elements from being produced in the image. Stop. It allows you to finish a job part way through the process. Stopping at a job at an earlier percentage can create blurry or less detailed results. Quality, it ranges from 0.25 all the way up to 5. The higher the number, the higher the quality of the image. The higher the quality, the longer the image will take to produce. 
Chaos. It ranges from 0 up to 100. It changes how varied the results will be. Higher values produce more unusual and unexpected generations. Tile. It generates images that can be used as repeating tiles to create seamless patterns for fabrics, wallpapers, and even textures. Stylize. Stylize influences how strongly this training is applied. Low stylization values produce images that closely match the prompt, but are less artistic. High stylization values create images that are very artistic, but less connected to the prompt. Mid Journey has systems in place to help users generate impressive results, even with simple short prompts. While strategies used in other AI program prompts may still work, they're not always necessary due to Mid Journey's unique style. Short prompts can give some amazing results, and if you want to make something random, like add a peanut butter, or just pick a wild style, you absolutely can. But with time, you'll get a feel for how changes to your prompts changes the image. The possibilities are quite endless, and can lead to creating some really cool stuff. You can make amazing art with short prompts, or even long prompts. It's all about finding your style, what you want to get out of Midjourney, and your image. You will begin to discover new ways of expressing ideas that are optimized for AI. Every word in your prompt is interpreted as a potential element that could appear in the final artwork. When you master writing prompts, you eventually start reaching new points of language, and more importantly, language that AI can understand. Midjourney sees words, thinks every word should end up in the image. So sometimes it makes things a bit more difficult. The prompt was a photograph of a fish not in water. Yet the fish is still in the water. Here's another example. A painting of the bear facing the screen. We didn't get the image we exactly wanted because the AI took facing the screen and thought it should have the bear face a window or TV screen. So you can switch facing the screen for looking forward. Although we still didn't get the image we wanted, but the more you learn about the AI, the more ideas or phrases you have learned in order to get the image exactly how you want. So instead, we change it to a portrait painting of a bear. And then we get the exact image we want, as the AI reads portrait as a closer up view of the bear's face, which implies that it is facing forward. Another form of prompts is an image prompt, which allows you to take the essence of one or multiple images and build it into a source for inspiration for mid-journey. And it allows you to make changes to it change the appearance of whatever you want. You can do this by sending the image into the chat with the Midjourney bot. Then, you will copy that link of the image and paste it into the Imagine box before you type anything. And then type your prompt or you can just send it straight into the chat. Another way you can do this is by using slash blend and paste it into the chat box there. Both will get you the same results, so it's just up to you whichever you use. This also allows you to blend images together as well, such as these. This opens the door for so many new things, and I can't wait to see what else is to come within Midjourney. They are constantly updating it and changing new things. For all the people that are still watching the video, you get a bonus tip. I'm going to head over to the website called the Noon Shot. What this website does is it builds the Midjourney prompt out for you, that way you don't have to do any of the work yourself. All you have to do is scroll through the different art styles or design styles you want to be included into the prompt and also how strong you want it to be and they will build the prompt out for you. So here's a quick example. I chose the prompt, an open door leading into an amazing unimaginable city. So I'm going to start by changing the lighting. I'll change it to dusk and keep it at level one. I will then change the depth of field to deep focus and also change the quality to max, stylize also on max, and chaos on 25. Now, I have a fully built out prompt. So now we can send it over to Discord to the Midjourney bot and see what it creates. So this is what it created and I think it looks pretty cool. This website is completely free to use and can help with learning about all the different parameters or little things that you can add to improve your prompts. You don't have to use this, but it makes things that much easier. If you found any information in this video helpful, then let me know in the comments and by liking this video. If you want to see more content like this, then subscribe to my channel, turn on those notifications. Anyways, thanks for watching.